1. For the record, I am an 18-year-old girl that happens to use websites like eBay, Gumtree, the Australian Craigslist, and Carousel, pretty much a social media-linked Gumtree, to buy and sell. This just happened to be the scariest experience I've had. Also, I finished my HSC high school certificate, a major exam that all high school leavers had to do. It was about 11pm on a weekday. I just finished school, so now I'm on a break. I was just using my computer when my phone lit up and the notification from Carousel came up. I'm interested. Can I see more photos? Could I please see a try-on? I was simply selling a pre-loved jacket, so of course, I complied to his request. He changed the subject. Do you have any earphones? It wasn't something I was looking to sell. Rather confused, I told him that I had a new pair and I was willing to sell it for $30. To further add to the confusion, he asked me if I had any used pairs. Might I add, isn't it kind of gross to buy used earphones from a stranger? I rejected his question and segued the topic back to the jacket. Reminder, it was 11pm on a weekday. The guy asked me if we could meet up now. I was starting to feel creeped out. I wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt, but the entire situation was just strange. I told my mother and sister about it. My sister offered to walk out with me, since it would be unwise to meet up with a stranger on the streets at night. Next, he offered to come pick it up at my place. I'll pick it up from your place if you're willing. Noting the time, I offered that we meet tomorrow, but he justified his reasons by saying he had work. Going back and forth, I was confirming details such as the jacket being a woman's style and in a size small. He complied with no problem. This app allowed people to make offers, which basically confirms deals so that users could leave feedback, positive, neutral, or negative. Pretty much a big deal for serious sellers such as myself. At this stage, he was making offers and immediately cancelling them. My suspicions were growing, and the thought that maybe he was trolling came to mind. Alas, he asked for my address, and said he'd be over soon. Being the cautious person, I gave him a neighbor's address, so that my personal details wouldn't be leaked. I mean, either way, my neighbor's house was within walking distance. Five minutes later, he asked for my number so that he could call me when he gets there. This was indeed super creepy. I asked about using data to just message me through the app, but he said he didn't have much data to use. So I just gave him my number. Ten minutes later, no caller ID rang. I picked up. Hello? There was a short silence before there was a croaky. Hello? Response. I kept silent, and he said, I'm here, come outside. Okay, no, I was seriously freaking out. My sister grabbed a hammer and put it in her bag. Her reasons, don't worry, if anything happens, we have a weapon. I opened my front door, peered at my neighbor's house, and I didn't see any suspicious vehicles. After minutes of hesitation, I messaged him on the app and said I was uncomfortable with going outside. It was now 11.40 p.m. Immediately he responded, why can I pick it up then? Then the conversation went on like this. Me, can you do tomorrow? Him, uh, tomorrow I work till late. Then I'll be overseas for some months. Me, any early hours? Him, I need to be at work at 7.20, yeah. Me, what time earliest could you pick up then? Him, January, possibly. Me, I mean in terms of tomorrow. Him, I leave home at 5.30, yeah. Made an offer. Please accept my offer to exchange feedback later. Cancelled offer. Me. Question mark. Him. Feeling happy. Creepy. I think so. I ignored him. The next day at 5pm he messaged again. Hello. Can I please get this? Can I see more photos? How do we deal? I'm interested. We conversed a bit about location and time. We agreed with a nearby train station at 7 or 8pm. Since he finishes work at that time. Nearing 8pm, he messaged me and said he was there. I live very close, so I just drove out with my mother and sister, since I was too scared to be alone. We waited on platform 2, the station has two platforms, and asked him to come over. He dodged my request and bombarded me with, 
Coming now, what are you wearing? I'm wearing a black jacket with hood zipped in jeans. I replied, I'm wearing all black. No, didn't say what kind of black I was wearing. What clothing are you wearing? Can't seem to see you. I ignored him and asked where he was. He then asked if I was holding any distinct bags. There's too many, he said, she said, so here's another dialogue dump. Me. I'm standing at the staircase. Him. Oh my god, it's gonna be real late when I get home. Me, where are you? Him. Like, at the station. Me, where? I'm on plat two. Him. Um, can you walk towards me? Me. No, I'm waiting here. Him. I'm in a green Mazda. Me, come to the station. You were just here. Him. I need to pick up my girlfriend, I'll be right back. Me, I'm leaving in five, stop wasting my time. Him. I'll be back in ten, please wait. The next part is also confusing to explain. He kept messaging me in the ten minutes he was taking to pick up his girlfriend. When he came back, he was at all these different locations in the span of two minutes, supposedly by foot. The reason why he mentions the locations is because he kept asking me to walk to him. Next thing you know, he says he'll drive to me then, which makes no sense since he was about a one minute walk from me at the last location he mentions. I then say I'm leaving, you wasted my time. In about 20 seconds he says, What the fuck, I just walked here. This whole time, I'm observing all these people that are still at the station, and watching out for any dingy looking person. I don't see anyone that could be potentially messaging me. I say, I still haven't left, he says, I don't know, where are you? Beginning to seethe, I say, can you tell me where you are? And he says, sitting in my car. Nothing was making sense, and nothing was adding up. I then said, you said you walked here, can you hurry up? And guess what, he says, why rush? Mind you, it had been nearly an hour. You may think, why did I stick around for so long? I don't know either. At this point, the amount of times he has asked me to walk to him. Five. Fast forwarding. I decide to comply to him and go to the other platform. I tell him I'm there and waiting and suddenly, he begins repeating the messages I've been saying. Feeling at lost and also really irritated. I turn away and walk back towards platform one. A moment later, his message, Is that you wearing black Nikes? Up until this point, I thought maybe he's been trolling me all along. But this? How could he know exactly what I was wearing? I told him to come up to me. Now he was saying, Good luck in your HSC. Do you play League of Legends? Both of these. How did he know? I mean... I had a social media linked up to my carousel account. Could it have been a stalker? I don't even know. To me, that was the last straw. I was awfully scared, so I ignored him. Note, never saw his face. Still don't know what it was all about to this day. Trolled or stalked? I don't know. 2. I was 10 years old, lived in the Deep South. Me and my parents lived in the woods in a little house a couple miles from the tiny little town where I grew up. To get to our house, you turned down a paved road, travelled approximately a mile, and we lived in the woods down a short dirt road to the left. There were other homes sort of nearby, but woods separated all of us, so there was lots of privacy. It was summer, I was bored, because until I learned to drive, my summers were incredibly boring. My mom was not sociable, so I only had company or visited rarely, and we went to church, and we went shopping once a week in the nearest major city, but other than that, me and mom just stayed at home. In this little town, most people didn't even lock their doors. It was, and still is, probably one of the safest towns in America. So in the summer, my parents were too cheap to have air conditioning. We would have the doors and windows open, nothing locked never dreaming that her safety could be threatened. One day, my uncle, dad's brother, his wife and three kids showed up. His kids were in my age range, and I was ecstatic. My mom never looked forward to these visits. She just was not social, and our house was tiny. The kids had to camp out in the living room, etc. She knew my uncle was coming, but he wasn't due for another couple of weeks. But for some reason, he decided to come early. 
It was a summer evening. Me and my three cousins were out running around the yard playing like kids do when my cousins got to arguing. My uncle was in the living room. He called them in and made them sit down for a while until they could learn to behave. I stayed outside and practiced cartwheels, something I was desperately trying to learn before school started back. I noticed that this big guy came walking into the yard. I didn't really look at him in the face. I can tell you he was tall, a bit chubby, and muscular, and not wearing a shirt. He was carrying a limb. I don't know what kind it was. In the stories we later told about it, we refer to it as a big stick. But it looked like it had been kind of smoothed, some kind of way at the end of it. It was flexible like a whip. I don't know why he carried it. Maybe to hit dogs if they tried to attack while he was walking. Who knows? He walked by me and I stopped what I was doing and was curiously staring. Nobody visited us much. And usually they drove up in the yard and it was usually family. He walked up on our porch and knocked on our screen. My mother came to the door and he told her that he was lost. He said he was staying with some people and he wasn't from here. And he went to the store with them and they drove off and left him. And he didn't know how to get back to their house. My mom, this is her idea, not sure why. She told him that she would call this lady that lived down the road from us and ask if her teenage sons would drive down and pick him up and help him get back to where he was staying. My mom left him standing on the porch and walked away to make the phone call. And he did something that I thought was a little strange. He opened the screen door and stuck his head in, looking around. Of course, he saw my uncle, who was like this big, strong, stocky guy sitting on the couch. Mom called this lady, her boys drove up and got him pretty quickly, and he was gone. We didn't think much of it, until my uncle and family left. Because we were too busy and I was having fun. But after my uncle's family left at the end of that week, we found out some things. First of all, we found out that this guy was not lost at all. A relative that lived at the end of the road, where you turn off to head toward our house, said he saw the guy walk past his house for two or three days in a row. He was carrying that big limb or stick, whatever you want to call it, and he would stare down toward our house for a while. Then he would walk back by. Then the lady whose sons gave this guy a ride, she called my mom a few days after this happened. And she said he told her sons exactly how to get to where he was staying. She also told my mom that me and her needed to stay in the house and keep the doors locked because this young man was up to no good. I believe he had been watching and saw a petite woman and a little girl home alone all day with doors unlocked and unassuming of danger. My dad worked and didn't get home until 6pm in the evening. I think he had been watching us. Anyway, I've always wished my mother would have asked these boys' mother why she felt that this guy was dangerous to us, but my mom just didn't. But anyway, creepy stranger who came into our yard that day, let's never meet. 3. A year or so ago, I found myself alongside my now fiancé, the victim of the horror stories I love so much. I've been a fan of horror stories since I was a kid, but after the events I'll mention below, it took me a while to enjoy them again. Back in 2015, my boyfriend of three years and I broke up. I essentially had mental health issues I was struggling to accept whilst we were together, so we took some time apart. During the few months, I modelled. Some box standard modelling and some of the nude variety. I even had a tumbler for behind the scenes activities that I'm not proud of that's now gone. I got paid well so I thought nothing of it until I got contacted by some fans. These fans were creepy. Creepy to the point that they bombarded me with comments about wanting to have sex with me by force if necessary. This continued for a while until my ex scared these guys might figure out personal information about me White knighted me to defend me from their pursuits. Big mistake. To protect me from their virtual threats and comments that I was brushing off as nothing since hell it was Tumblr, he used his personal account. 
the account that had his real name, my real name, pictures of us, and the city we lived in. He hadn't used it in years, so he didn't remember any of this being on his profile. We never knew it had caused the shit it did. But, like the creeps they were, my fans tried to use this information to meet up with me. When I refused, it all took a turn. With messages and Snapchats alongside spam on other platforms, I just started to ignore them, hoping it had calmed down. My ex received a lot of the usual death threats that ensue white knighting on Tumblr, and we were both starting to get our lives in better places. Until I got a message that scared me to the bone. The message contained the name of where my ex worked. He hadn't worked there long at this point, maybe a month or so. But he didn't broadcast his job. Only friends and family knew he had it. And apparently, so did my fans. When I tried to make it seem like I knew nothing, to prevent any further threats, they responded with, we could just wait a run for him until after his shift. Before sending me a picture of his work location. Will you meet with us now? I pleaded and begged for them to leave him be, scared they'd actually do something. For them to leave him alone. I thought it had worked, but they never responded. After making sure my ex was okay, I tried to calm down for a few days. Then came the next photo message. The bus stop my ex used to get home in the center of our city. I contacted him to find out where he was and luckily he was on his way home a few minutes prior to that photo. I assumed they wouldn't know where to go even if they got the bus and decided to leave it at that. I didn't want to scare my ex. I still loved him. I didn't want him endangered because of my stupid naive actions. He was probably suspicious at that point but never said a word to me about it. A day or so later I received a new photo message. They were on the road near his house. That made me lose it. I texted my ex, got him to lock his doors and windows. He wasn't the only one home. He lived with his family at this point, the people I used to live with, who I lived with for two years prior to our breakup. Not knowing at this point how they got the information, we were both honestly scared for our lives. That night I got an unexpected Skype call from my ex. He explained to me how he'd had enough. How they'd told him they'd hacked his phone and my laptop to track us down, and how if he didn't end his life, how they'd reveal to my family and friends my private life. He apologized as he started swallowing a bunch of pills, before apologizing to me for everything and hanging up. I freaked. No one expects that. I truly believed my ex had gone to kill himself, until I received a text from his old phone, a number he hadn't used in years. He told me how he was okay, and how he had to fake his death to keep them away. I played along, even to the point of messaging these fans telling them that I was going to the police, and how I tracked them down and how they'd killed my baby's father. I told them I was pregnant, to see if that'd get them to calm down, to no avail. They apologized for my loss, and appeared to disappear after that. Until the end of last year. My ex and I, after this disaster, got back together, since we both knew living without each other wasn't an option. We got engaged and started looking for places to live. Usual adult decisions. One day in October, I got a message on my personal Instagram. We're still watching. Since that point, I've made sure we have been careful about what we post. We've changed devices and got rid of our webcams. To my fans, if you ever see this, let's never meet. Hey everyone, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to Three True Scary Stories, episode 189. Thank you very much to everyone who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Okay, this is Sunday, I believe you should be getting this on. Uh, right, so that'll be True Scary Stories again tomorrow. If I haven't been a lazy sod, I should hopefully have gotten them done already. And uh, Subscriber Stories on Tuesday, I think we'll have that. And, uh, you know what, let me know if you're getting bored with the schedule as is. I'm happy to shake it up if enough people aren't happy with it, but let me know. Let me know what you think. Uh, so, uh, then on Wednesday, more scary stories. And I should be okay for a glitch video this week. I just couldn't make it come together last week. Then, loads of paranormal stories. I'm usually okay for them. And we'll see about Saturday. I might do something different just for a change on Saturday. We'll see what happens. But if not, I'll try and do a TIFU. 
Okay, let me think. Any other news for now? Oh yeah, I'm going to gradually start doing some work on my next 30 stories video. I'm not going to have a set date for it. I'm just, I've, I've already got two stories recorded for it. Uh, it was just two I'd actually recorded for this video that turned out not to be long enough for this video. So that got me a start on that. And I'll put it together gradually and hopefully I'll have that up within two months. Hopefully within the two months. But I'm not going to put a set date. I know in my mind when I want it up. But I'm not going to make promises that I may not be able to keep. Right, and with that I think I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening and take very good care of yourselves.